Welcome to the fifth lecture in this lecture series on international arbitration practice. The first chapter of the lecture series concerns drafting and negotiating arbitration agreements. The last three lectures dealt with pathological clauses and the reasons for such clauses. This lecture and the next few lectures will deal with strategies to avoid such defective clauses. In this lecture, we will be looking at one of the strategies to avoid pathological clauses. There are several strategies, but one of the primary strategies is to base the clause or the dispute resolution clause on the model clauses of arbitral institutions or arbitration codes. For that, you will have to decide in the first place as to whether to go, go for institutional arbitration or ad hoc arbitration. In institutional arbitration, the arbitration is managed that by an arbitral institution. Examples of such institutions include the International Court of Arbitration of the International Chamber of Commerce, the Singapore International Arbitration Centre, etc. An ad hoc arbitration is where the arbitral tribunal and the parties manage the arbitration by themselves without involving any third party. Now, if you want to go for ad hoc arbitration, you can use the model arbitration clause contained in the Ancestral Arbitration Rules of 2010. Ancestral is the short form for United Nations Commission on International Trade Laws. The model law the model clause contained in the Ancestral Arbitration Rules state any dispute, controversy or claim arising out of or relating to this contract or the breach, termination or invalidity thereof shall be settled by arbitration in accordance with the Ancestral Arbitration Rules. Note, party should consider adding a. The appointing authority shall be b. The number of arbitrators shall be c. The place of arbitration shall be d. The language to be used in the arbitral, arbitral proceedings shall be. Note that now what we are discussing here is not a submission agreement which comes generally after the dispute arises but for arbitration clauses contained in agreements. Now even as regards this ancestral arbitration rules model clause that we quoted just now, there are a few things that you must necessarily note. The ancestral rules provides for an appointing authority. Under the ancestral arbitration rules of 1976, the default appointing authority used to be the permanent court of arbitration, that is PCA, situated at the Hague. So, if the parties were unable to come to a consensus on the arbitrator, the party seeking appointment of arbitrator had to approach the permanent court of arbitration for appointment. But the ancestral rules have been revised in 2010 with a further revision in 2013, which we are not concerned about now. But even under the 2010 rules, the PCA is the default appointing authority. But then, Parties can even agree on the appointing authority after the dispute is arisen. But if there is no agreement, then the PCA will be the default appointing authority. In this regard, Article 6.1 of the rules states, unless the parties have already agreed on the choice of an appointing authority, a party may at any time propose the name or names of one or more institutions or persons, including the Secretary General of the Permanent Court of Arbitration at the Hague here and after called the PCA, one of whom would serve as the appointing authority. So another example uh, is Article 7.1 of the Unsettled Arbitration Rules which provides that the default number of arbitrators is 3 in the absence of an agreement for a sole arbitrator. Conducting the arbitration with 3 arbitrators could really become intricate and costly with, with that choice. But when you read the model clause, which is quoted some time back, you must not have expected this, no? The point that we are making is that when you adopt any arbitration rules, whether ad hoc or institutional, there could be some provisions which could take you by surprise. So the lesson is, before you decide to agree upon the rules of an arbitral institution or any uh, arbitration rules, please, please do read them. There are good resources available in the internet on arbitration rules. 
especially on comparison of various arbitration tools. Some of the good ones are provided in the description to this video. Do check them out or at least save them in your computer. You could refer to those resources whenever you, the need arises. But make sure that when you are referring to them, the rules mentioned there are current. These days, arbitral institutions update their rules frequently. Now, if you want to go for an arbitral institution to manage your arbitration and you have de decided on such an institution, use the model clause that is available in the institution's website. For example, if you want to choose Singapore International Arbitration Center, then use its model clause. SIAC's model arbitration clause reads, any dispute arising out of or in connection with this contract, including any question regarding its existence, validity or termination, shall be referred to and finally resolved by arbitration administered by the Singapore International Arbitration Center, SIAC, in accordance with the arbitration rules of the Singapore International Arbitration Center, SIAC rules, for the time being in force, which rules are deemed to be incorporated by reference in this clause. The seat of arbitration shall be Singapore. The tribunal shall consist of dash arbitrators. The language of the arbitration shall be dash. Now, the reason why you adopt model clauses is that they are fairly well accepted world over and courts will not generally refuse to enforce such well accepted widely used clauses. But please be cautious. As we stated some time back, read the arbitration rules and then adopt them or agree to them. And there is one important thing that you must know. Unnecessary deviations from model clauses may be avoided unless the parties are extremely cautious of the deviations proposed and their implications on the conduct of the rules and the arbitration proceedings. So, use of the model rules or the model clauses contained in the arbitration rules or institution rules is one of the primary and well-recognized strategies to avoid defective arbitration clauses. There are many others which we will discuss in the next lecture. Do check out the links provided in the description to this video under the heading References. Happy reading and learning. By the way, in case you are thinking that this lecture series contributes to your learning in international arbitration, do spend a couple of minutes to write to lawbadri at gmail.com that is L-A-W-B-A-D-R-I at the rate gmail.com If you think that there is something lacking or if something can be improved upon in these lectures, please do write. would love to have your feedback. Adios, ye hashtag